Drawing down is the process of increasing the length of a piece of steel while at the same time reducing its thickness. It is done by heating the metal to a bright yellow heat and hammering it straight down against the face of the anvil. The technique is generally used for making points or tapers on round or square section steel, but can also be used on flat and hexagonal bar steel. One of the most commonly used blacksmithing techniques, it is often the starting point for a wide range of products, including nails, fire pokers and scrolls. Upsetting. This technique is carried out at a white heat and is for increasing or swelling the material in a particular section of steel to create more mass. The overall length will be reduced at the same time. Much practice is needed to upset the material in exactly the right place because it takes a precise knowledge of both the heat of the forge and how to place that heat. The job may be made easier by heating a larger area then cooling it by pouring water onto the bar using a can or cup leaving just the right amount of heat in the right place for the first upset. Before the introduction of drills, the traditional way to make holes was to manually punch them through hot steel. Hole punching is ideally done at a bright yellow heat and requires a hardened steel punch to create the correct size hole. First hammer the punch into the hot steel from one side and then from the other, removing a small piece of material in the process. Holes created this way can become decorative features as the metal swells around the punched area. Drifts, tapered steel pieces driven all the way through a hole and commonly used in hammer and axe making, can also be used to enlarge the hole and smooth the inside edges. Splitting. Also known as hot cutting, splitting is carried out with a chisel or hot set to divide material or cut away sections completely. In some cases, a split can be made and opened up to insert and forge weld another piece of metal, typically a higher carbon steel to create the cutting edge of an axe or other sharp tool. Splits are also used to form scrolls and make twisted decorative cages. A bright red heat is best for hot cutting, but steel can also be cut cold. Bending is best carried out at a red or bright red heat, but can also be performed cold. It can be done freeform over the anvil or with the jig or tongs and is widely used for changing the shape of a piece of work without changing its section. The metal on the outside of the material will stretch while the inside will compress or upset and this needs to be taken into consideration. But it can also be used to the smith's advantage especially in artistic pieces. Often the steel needs to be upset or reduced accordingly before bending to take this into account if equal material is needed in a bend. Bending is often overlooked as a traditional technique, but learning how to do it properly cannot be underrated and it is vital to the smith's armoury of skills. Swaging is the altering of the dimensions and shape of material through the use of swages and dies. Swages come in pairs, top and bottom tools between which the hot steel is worked. Bottom swages fit into the hardy hole in the anvil, while top swages are struck with a sledgehammer by the striker. Alternatively, a smith can use a spring swage if they work alone. A swage set allows a smith to make an infinite number of shapes, the most common being tenons, which are formed at the end of bars for riveting sections together. 
Fire welding is the pinnacle of the blacksmith's art and the most complex technique to master. It involves joining two pieces of metal using the extreme heat of the forge and, while still in a plastic state, around 1200 degrees C, hammering them together. There are many different types of join and different steels weld at different temperatures, which presents complexities for the smith when it comes to fusing high carbon and low carbon steels. Laminate steels, Damascus steels and sharp edge tools are all made using fire welding and a great deal of practice and preparation is needed to perfect the technique. 